Hey there folks! So today I've got a brand new extreme rate shell for the uh, Game Boy Color. Uh, now for those who have seen the previous videos, um, this is not the first time I'm doing a, uh, an extreme rate shell, especially not for Game Boy Color, but unlike the previous two that I did, this is a, um, well, at the time when I did these, these were new models, but this is yet again another new model. Uh, so these are uh, old and busted, I guess. Uh, but anyway, here's what we got. So in the box we have, if I can pull it out, the shell itself, some buttons, some tools that I'm probably not going to use, a big old baggie full of screws, membranes, custom, by the way, Extreme Rate is making these. Um, you can tell that they are different from any of the other stuff on the market because if you look at the start and select membrane, they're nice and short because Extreme Rate, within their uh, buttons here, they give you plastic start and select buttons. It's one of the things that I liked about uh, this shell that I was taking a look at. These, these buttons are actually surprisingly nice. I suspect they're the same buttons as last time, but we'll find out. Um, oh yeah, and there's a the, uh, little IR window with the buttons. Uh, don't know if it's... No, yeah, it looks to be the same IR plastic that they normally use for um, IR windows, so that's nice. Uh, we got the metal bits, the shielding for the cart slot, and the uh, battery terminal. And this looks to be a lens, a sticker, and some adhesive for the screen. Nice. Might as well start opening this stuff up. I think they could do with uh, fewer bags, but I suppose it is nice to keep everything neat and organized. And I'm not going to bother with this. I'm going to continue to use my tools. Um, at the end of the day, I don't care how good the uh, tip is. This screwdriver is just flat out uncomfy to grip compared to a bigger one. And I guess I'm getting old enough that uh, makes a difference to me. Um, not that I can't use the other screwdrivers, or just, you know how it is. Anyway, let's take a look here. Uh, so, I got one of the uh, Atomic Purple shells. And let me grab... I didn't think to have one of these handy in advance. This is... Oh, that's disgusting. My cat has clearly been chilling with my Game Boys. Um, this is an OEM Atomic Purple. You can tell the colors are not even close to the same thing. This is quite a bit more purple. Uh, this almost just looks like a uh, dirty or um, like yellowed clear, whereas this is like obviously purple when you look at it. Uh, but not to say I don't like it, just, you know, not the same color. Uh, but one of the uh, new things with this shell, one of the things that especially drew me in was the multi-screen compatibility. So if, you, if you're looking at this weird cutout in the uh, screen lens area and going, what the heck is that? That's how they did it. So I don't know if these are intended to be assembled by hand or, you know, if they're expecting you to have a certain level of tools, but I personally wouldn't bother trying to assemble one of these. Uh, like if you have to trim any of the tabs or anything like that, I wouldn't try that without uh, side angle flush cutters that of course are not where I left them. Let me find them. Rather, they were precisely where I left them. Just, I didn't leave them in the proper spot. Uh, anyway, Genuinely good tool to have. I personally like these CHP 170 flush cutters. They're more expensive than the uh, like cheaper generic ones uh, that may or may not come with a 3D printer. Uh, but what I like about the CHP 170s is that 
As you use them, these blades dull, and you have to replace them. As you use these things, these blades crack and shatter. And I have had one hit me in the forehead before, and that just, that has soured me away from these tools. I would rather spend six bucks on this than spend three bucks on this and, and get, get it in my eye or something, you know? Uh, but anyway, that's enough rambling. I like these for, um, for lots of things, but they're certainly gonna come in handy pulling these off the sprue. I've learned that there are actually some pretty decent um, model making flush cutters that some people buy. I think they're called like God Hand or whatever. And I've heard really good things about them, but I've also heard that you know, if you get them, you only ever use them on plastic because if you use them on metal, they'll get destroyed. And I use these on um, pins all the time, like when I'm soldering. Cut off a component lead. Clip, clip. <laughs> Works pretty nice. Anyway, once those are off the sprue, we don't even need the sprue at least. And then from here, you will need to do some more trimming depending on which specific screen you're installing. Um, so, like I said, one of the things that I really appreciate about this kit is that it's compatible with nearly every backlight kit right now. Um, I mean, things may change in a few months, uh, but the Cloud Game Store 2.6 inch screen just drops right in. You don't need to do any modification to the tabs or brackets or anything. You just have to cut out this inside uh, this interior bezel here um, and the new cloud game store backlit screen does have a different ribbon on it but the LCD dimensions are entirely the same and if the bigger screen fits the 2.45 screen will definitely fit because that one's even smaller in fact this one might actually be pretty good for the laminated displays I'll have to check that out um, unfortunately it's not as simple as just trying to assemble one. Um, all my laminated displays are in fully assembled units. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to check that out later. Um, next time, I guess. But also, that was the 2.5. I also have a horrendously abused, but somehow still working, uh, Q5 LCD. This one doesn't drop in without uh, pulling some of these tabs off, but if you remove this tab, this tab, I believe both of these tabs, and uh, some of the stuff down here, you'll, you'll have to play with it. It should, it should just drop right in and it should fit nicely between the screw posts. There's already even a cutout for the uh, LED window, um, tube, I guess, and it should drop right in after pulling those off. But you'll have to, like, you'll have to get one of these and, um, like do some test fits and see exactly which ones need to come off. So it looks like for a Q5 specifically, it looks like we have to basically remove every single tab except for these bottom ones and except for that one right there. But that would need to come off that, 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 and that, and that. And then it should drop in. Uh, but what we're doing today, I'm actually going to be using this thing as a donor. Um, forgot about those color palettes. And this one has an even older backlight kit in it. I figured this one would be an excellent donor for this because then we can compare some of the uh, older shells to some of the newer shell options. Um, and I don't know what we need to trim for this kit, but we'll find out. So I will start by setting this aside and making room, and we will tear down this thing. So this is a custom that I did a video on quite a while back. Um, battery's still fine. That's, that's always a good sign. I haven't really been using this thing. Uh, when I built this thing, I half-assed the assembly because I knew I wasn't keeping this shell. 
I was very displeased with the quality of this shell uh, and my efforts to make a USB-C hole did not improve my opinion on this shell but one of the biggest problems I had was that it just it's it's warped and it doesn't close all the way and if you think oh well you need to make sure there's nothing pinching and it's like well it did that before I even put anything in the shell um, also if you try and tighten these screw posts down the, the thing just cracks like I don't even know how that happened but there's a big old crack in the back there uh, one of these top screw posts is actually totally stripped out probably this one I don't know I'll find out when I try and remove the screw and just oh no it's this one right here it's the one that doesn't even have a screw in it <laughs> uh, they're just overall horribly bad shells uh, but these are the like generic ones if you just buy a shell or if you just search for a shell on like eBay or Aliexpress and then sort by price this is what you're getting they're god-awful shells but on that note I guess it's uh it's pretty nice that the modding market the aftermarket for modding has grown so much that we have so many different shells. Like, I, I understand it's getting difficult to keep track of. I can't even keep track of it myself. But we're at the point where it's almost like, okay, pick your vendor, pick your color, and then uh, buy all of the parts for that specific thing. Because it's like Funny, Funny Playing has their own shells and they have their own backlight kits for the shells and so on and so forth. Which, oh, reminds me. I should probably mention that. The uh, laminated Q5 backlight kits are not compatible with this shell. Uh, like there is a lot of trimming that you have to do uh, before it'll work with either Funny Playing or the unbranded laminated Q5s. It's not happening. All right. So one of the things that we will have to modify the shell for is this specific Game Boy Color has been modified with, oh my goodness, whoops, that was really bent. Um, this Game Boy Color has been modified with a rechargeable battery kit. The specific one is an older Giltessa mod. I think he's got a completely new one that like wraps around the whole bottom of the motherboard and I know I was just talking shit about the extreme rate screwdrivers for how horrifying the grip was but trust me the grip on this is much better or I wouldn't keep it on my desk all right does this one have brightness controls and I never wired it in, or does it not have brightness controls? Um, like buttons. Ah, that's a good question. I think this one predates the button controls. This is an older kit. The reason I'm asking is because, you know, while I have it apart, it's something I can remedy. But I don't want to waste the time. It's not even supported. Anyway, I think we're good to go. Pull all this stuff out. I'll see if we can even salvage this lens too, because I like this lens. And it wasn't even stuck down in that corner. All right. Oh, the adhesive didn't come off very smooth. Oh well, it'll still be fine. I can use the new lens if I want, or I can use the old lens. I suppose we might as well take a look at the uh, lens it comes with is stock sized so if you're using like a q5 kit or one of those 2.2 inch screens you'll want to use your own lens but that should just 
trap are in. And indeed it do. I'm not sure that this is the proper lens choice for this color of shell, but... One thing I'm trying to look at, I'm trying to see how visible this bezel is. from the front of the lens and I mean it's it's there if you hold it at the right angle so I'm wondering if I should have trimmed it off let's trim it off anyway and this is why I went on that tangent about flush cutters so it makes this sort of trim stupid easy but it also helps that I think extreme rate designed this so you can slip flush cutter tip in there just snip that off not necessary but I'm doing it to see if I can't make the aesthetic just a little bit better did I forget one I guess so. Oh, I forgot too. There we go. And now from the front, you can't see that bezel at pretty much any angle. Um, the only angles you can are stupid extreme no one would be looking at the console from that angle anyway okay let us carry on I'm gonna go ahead and detach that and well that's convenient it just drops right in we don't have to we don't have to do any trimming. It's almost like this shell was designed for this kit. Can we even use this adhesive it came with, or I probably shouldn't because of how I just trimmed that bezel off. Adhesive's gonna be flapping in the breeze. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just gonna take a small strip of adhesive down here and um, That'll be the only thing that's holding the screen in. I don't want to get too hung up on making a uh, little gasket. I figure this thing's always going to leak dust into the screen anyway, so I might as well only use a little bit to make it easier on myself next time I have to pull it apart. And we'll just stick that right where it won't be seen. Clean this off because of course I already had the uh, film off. Oh, and I definitely shouldn't have cleaned this right over the open lens. That was smart, wasn't it? Oh well. Hope for the best, I guess. Alright, but this way I figure with just a little bit of adhesive, if I need to pull this out, I can hit it with some heat, uh, some hot air from the front, and then slip some fishing line underneath and then try and cut the adhesive. And it should be, should be, fingers crossed I guess, should be pretty easy. Probably won't be, but it might also never come to that. Get 
this plugged in, mayhaps. You gotta be careful with these specific kits. Uh, you can't you can't put the board flat on the screen and then press the connector on because it will the plastic shell will serve as a fulcrum and it'll bend the LCD down and it will likely crack the uh, the screen. So we have to tilt it up and then connect it from the side. I'm gonna have to do the exact same thing when I plug that connector in, but should be a little bit easier. But also I think I'll get these seated first. one and then the other drop right in there cool and we should be good to go now, if I were doing this build for me, I would use different color buttons. I don't like to, uh, I don't generally like to put the same color buttons as the shell in consoles, but I would also really like to try out these buttons, see how they feel. This one, that'll go in just like that. I'll tilt it up, get my finger under there, and press it down. And that should be it. There's supposed to be a little insulation film sticker that we put over this thing. Um, I clearly forgot to install it the first time. I have no idea what happened to it. It's gone now. But I'd recommend installing it. Alright. We will use the new screws that it comes with. It's always a good idea to use the new screws that a shell comes with. Sometimes the screw holes are sized a little bit differently. You want to make sure that you get the proper size screw in there. So sometimes, like I said, if it's sized a little bit differently, the shell will come with shorter screws or something. Uh, unfortunately, they're all just in one big pile, or one big baggie. It looks like there are three different types of screws that come with these shells. So we have the long Y screws, as in their Y shape, they have a little tri-point on them. We have the short coarse thread uh, cross head, or probably Phillips. Uh, in a stock Game Boy Color, these would be JIS, but here they look to be Philips. Uh, these ones, these are a little bit finer thread and they're even shorter than the other short screws. Let's see if I can... These lined up. You can see, just a little bit shorter. And the thread's a little bit finer, uh, but also the screw bit is a different size. This is a smaller Phillips. This one actually looks JIS, whereas this one looks Phillips. Interesting mix and match, but the medium size screws go into the motherboard to hold it down. As long as you have the correct bit on your screwdriver. How about that?
Oh, and while I had it out of the shell, I really should have touched up that port. Let me, um, let me pause for a moment. I'm going to fix the soldering on that port because I had the thing angled up. Uh, the front ground pins don't seem to be anchored very well, so one moment, please. All right, there we go. Probably user error on my part as to the reason why that even broke in the first place. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of fit tests with this thing. But I haven't necessarily shown on screen. Um, oops. Oh well. It's fixed now. Continue the assembly. I am going to route this wire on top, or I guess on bottom, technically. On this side of the board. How about that? Just to ensure that it doesn't get pinched. And so because we're screwing into plastic, um, I, I see this a lot and I don't know what specifically, you know, where people are getting it, but we're, we're threading metal into plastic. It does not need to be, it does not need to be tight. In fact, it can't be tight. That's a problem. <laughs> um, so my preferred, my go-to technique for that is to snug it down, not tight, snug, and then back a quarter turn. I have yet to crack a screw post doing that. So I think I'm going to stick with that time being. Alright, there's one downside to those plastic start and select buttons is that it's a little bit harder to get the membrane aligned, but if that's the only problem, that is such a non-issue, it's not even funny. That's not too bad. Oh, oh my God. I forgot. Oh, I don't know what happened to it. There is supposed to be a uh, diffuser. Whatever. I'll worry about it later. This is about the uh, shell. All right, so what do we have to do next? Next, I have to get the back prepped so that we can install it. This back is not going to fit on here as is because I need to have a USB port for the uh, charger. Um, unfortunately, there is not a single shell that comes with a hole cut for the USB port, but I think we'll, I think we'll be able to manage. What I'm going to do to fix that is I actually designed this custom jig that you just insert into the headphone jack and then you can you can hold it and use the jig itself you know with like needle files and such and just work that DC jack hole into the bigger USB-C port that you need or you can mark it off with like a sharpie and, and uh, come in and drill it out with um, like a drill, pr drill press or something but what I'm gonna do and all most people need to do is get one of these 3D printed, take a three millimeter or smaller drill bit, and then just drill a couple pilot holes. There's obviously already one for the DC jack, but we'll drill one in the middle and then one in the end, and then come in with needle files and slowly widen that hole out to, uh, to make it as big as we need. Uh, so like I said, I made this jig I'm not done with it yet, I'm still iterating. This video will probably go up before I'm done with this, um, but in the off chance I actually finish this before the video goes up, I'll throw a link in the description. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do this mostly off camera, um, only because I don't have all the tools I need at my desk and I'm just too lazy to go set up my camera at my workstation. So I'll be back and this will hopefully be a USB-C port. 
Cool. So, just a quick update. I got the jig on there, dropped this in my vise, and then drilled out a hole, a uh, very small hole in the middle of the jig, and now I'm going to come back with my needle files and uh, finish it up by hand. So, the needle files I'm using, literally just a cheapo set from Harbor Freight, and um, like you can get the one without the handles for $3 or the one with the handles for five, or something like that. They, they might have gone up in price, but either way, this is the tool for the job and just work it out. Get there eventually. Just be careful that you're not hitting the, uh, the walls and such behind it. Uh, so again, I'm gonna do the rest of this off screen because dust, I don't wanna get dust all over my workstation. And uh, I'll be back. Just take off a little bit of material at a time, check the fit, and rinse and repeat until it's perfect. All right, one more update before I do the rest off camera, I swear. I promise this time. So, just been sitting there working away whoop, with my flat file, trying to expand the top and bottom, just like this. And now that I've got the top and bottom expanded enough, or almost enough, that I can do the rest of the camera, I'm going to take the round file and finish up the ends. It just so happens that this is a 3mm file, and USB-C ports require a 3mm cutout. Um, the jig is slightly undersized. I think I might fix that so that I can use my files with it. But, um, yeah. We just finish up the edges just like that. Hell, I don't. I designed the jig or intended the jig to be disposable. You know, you just file right through it. But I suppose guess and check works too if you want to do that. But anyway, I'll be back. Finish this up. Hopefully, it's a uh, nice hole by the time I'm done with it. All right. So I think I've got the uh, USB-C port filed out nicely. Uh, but before I can continue doing the fit test, uh, fit check, there are a few other trims I will need to make. Uh, notably, the battery compartment needs to fit this battery instead of double A's because this specific Game Boy has already been modified for that. And unfortunately, Extreme Rate went with the stock style design. Uh, some of the other shell manufacturers have been putting in these big, wide battery compartments that still work with double A batteries, but will also fit a uh, lithium ion battery just in case. Um, so in the case of the extreme rate one, I'm just gonna have to cut out that divider. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did with this shell and just cut out most of the divider and um, hope for the best. I'll also have to cut a hole for the battery plug. But luckily, one of the nice things about this being a clear shell is that I can literally come in and go, hey, I need this much cut off, except I need to do that from straight down and not at the angle I was just doing that at. That's dangerous. Uh, but now I can come in and go, oh, there's my port, there's a hole to cut. So I'm going to go do that as well. And again, I'm doing that off camera because that completely unnecessary for this shell in normal Game Boys. We just have to make a few modifications to make it fit this specific Game Boy. So I will go do that and I'll be back. Okay, pretty sure we're there. Just one more thing I need to trim. And I think I'll do that on uh, my bench here. There is a capacitor that does not clear this support. And that may have actually been what cracked my other shell. Trim that down. Slip that over the port. And then... No, it still doesn't quite fit. I'm thinking I'm going to bring this whole area down. also thinking 
I'm gonna do it with the flush cutters. Oh, that's a lot better. Nearly there, I swear. All right. Just got one more thing. I didn't realize that that wasn't clearing that connector. I gotta bring that down a little. And uh, I'm gonna do that with the file. So it's gonna take me a minute. I'll be back one more time. Cha da! It's all done. I just had to shave down this interior area and then cut out that opening just a little bit more. And then it slips right over the port and right onto the back of the console. Ah, I forgot how much trimming this thing required. I probably would not have done that today had I realized. So I guess that's for the best. All right, the shielding goes on this way. No need to remove the film, but you can if you want. That's why that wasn't working. Use the smallest of the bunch, whoops. So this must be the new one, because the other one has a really big scratch in it. And I'm assuming the new one won't come with a big scratch. And unfortunately my sensor was slightly in the way. I should have test fit the battery. Having to pull all these screws out to remove more material is gonna suck. He's thinking as he puts the last screw in without test fitting still.
That is the correct orientation. I just didn't remove enough plastic to plug it in. Oh, never mind. I did. It was just very tight fit. Excellent. Huh? Huh? That's pretty good. So the last shell I did this build in, it wasn't even centered. Granted, that was that was partially my fault because it was a stock style stock style shell. Wait, no, that wasn't my fault. This was a pre-trimmed shell. I didn't do this. Someone else came in here and cut it out, I think. Actually, I don't remember. If it was me, that's my bad. But if it wasn't, er. Anyway. Might as well peel the film now. Had that on there for so long. But, huh? Huh? Let's try it out with my favorite game. Mary-Kate and Ashley Pocket Planner. Or not. It did work. Let's see what's on here. Or it's a Game Boy problem. That's annoying. It did work. So the question now is, what did I do to cause this problem? I will say, this, the shell does feel really good. Kind of hard to uh, test the buttons out if the console doesn't boot, though. I swear, I did test it before we started. It was running the game. Oh, I know exactly what it is. Remember when I said, way back when, you know, 20 minutes ago, I'm sitting here going, and there's supposed to be some insulation film on the back of this uh, backlight kit. I must have forgotten it. Oh, well, it's been fine this far. What's the worst that could possibly happen? So we're going to be installing some insulation film, or at the very least, trimming these cart pins. Holy cow, how did I get away with that before? All right. Because these old kits require that. I'm going to get this fixed and reassembled, and we'll reconvene in just a moment. I got so used to these newer backlight kits not needing this that... At some point I stopped doing it and forgot that some kits did need it. Ta-da! Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Slip that in there. I don't know if I 
bend that this way, there will be less doubling up of that cable. No, oh, but now it doesn't fit. Is that cable stick? I should have made that battery cable shorter. I wasn't really thinking about it. All right. Huh? Huh? Now it boots. It's funny how the console just works when you install things and follow the directions. Cool. Let us try out. Uh, come on. There we go. Mary Kate and Ashley's pocket planner. I think I had the same complaint when I uh, built this Game Boy originally, was that the touch sensors are in a uh, pretty stupid spot. And since it's the spot I put them in, I have no one to blame but myself. But, uh, I mean, all the buttons work. I feel fine. The screen is still glitchy, I see. But that's, that's the screen itself and not the, uh, not the shell. But, huh? Eh? Huh? Eh? I think it came out pretty good, and unfortunately this kit does not support playing charge, but it does still charge just fine, and I found a diffuser that I slipped in there. Looks looks quite a bit better. But uh, it'll show red while charging, and then it'll switch to green, I think, when it's done charging. And then we have white for our power. Eh? And the jig was a jig. Um, it was certainly helpful but the jig only gets you about 80% there because the specific position of this port might vary depending on how well you soldered or the specific case you're installing it into. Uh, so I, I undersized it intentionally and then you know you just gotta finish it up with a file in hand. But as far as the shell itself goes, this is, this is pretty decent. So fit and feel, it feels a lot like their previous iteration of the shell that is covered in plastic dust from this one. Um, like all the buttons and such feel the same and they didn't feel bad on this shell. They, they feel pretty good. So I think, I think it worked out pretty well in their favor. I thought, I thought it came with a little port cover and it probably did and I just lost it. But if it didn't, I mean, it's not the end of the world. The previous iteration of the shell came with a um, link port cover that you jam into link port and the finish on the cover matches the shell. I don't think this one had one. I don't know if it's supposed to. Let me double check the 8 million plastic bags. There's the tools, nothing in there. And then these are all empty. So if I lost it, that's my bad. Um, it's not really necessary either. Nintendo didn't see fit to include port covers with any of their models after the original Game Boy, so I think I'm comfortable with out having. All right, might as well install the sticker. Though I am somewhat partial to leave it clear. I do like that. there we go. So one of the things that Extreme Rate has been doing with their shells that I am wholly in favor of, uh, but I completely understand if um, other people are less interested, let's compare one of their first shells with one of their, with the current shell. The biggest difference, aside from the finish, well, the finish is totally different. They do offer this finish on this new shell. I just wanted this one. Um, 
no Nintendo logo. So the sticker on the back is the same way as well. The original Extreme Rate sticker did have a Nintendo logo, Game Boy Color, and then they uh, swapped everything out with their new design. They put their logo on there and they use their, um, their project name for this, I guess. I don't know. Um, you can always just grab your own sticker if you don't like that. Like it's pretty standard size. You can swap it out if you want. Um, but I'm fine with it. I, I, I don't mind it. I like that they're not putting logos on this stuff. It makes it much easier to get this stuff across customs. Plus the Nintendo logo never belonged to extreme rate in the first place. So they have no right to use it in anyway. Um, same goes for funny playing, but that clearly doesn't stop them. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm digging the shell. I like it. It's pretty good. I especially like the start and select buttons, though I think in my most recent escapades, this membrane didn't get seated properly because this button doesn't feel right. But the other one does, and even on the uh, previous shell, they they feel fine. I'm, I'm really pleased with this. I'm really digging this shell. Uh, one of the things I really like about the shell especially is that it's compatible with all those different backlight kits. Like you don't have to get, um, extreme rate doesn't make backlight kits yet, maybe? Hmm? Uh, but Funny Playing does. Funny Playing makes backlight kits and they make shells. So they make their backlight kits specific to their shells and vice versa. Cloud Game Store makes backlight kits and shells. This is a horrible example. Cloud Game Store makes backlight kits and shells, so they make their backlight kits specific to their shells. Extreme Rate makes a shell that works with all the backlight kits. And you know what? Look at that alignment. That's that's spot on. They did a bang up job. I am very pleased with this. Um, so I guess I will, uh, I guess I'll stop here before I ramble too much longer. Uh, big thanks to Extreme Rate for sending me this to check out. I will shoot some links in the description and I'll shoot some links to some of the other shells that I've taken a look at from them, including the uh, Game Boy Advance SP ones. Those are pretty good. But anyway, that's all I've got. This is a pretty, uh, pretty nice shell. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you a little next one.